Welcome back, folks. Triple Crown here. Continuation of the Russia CCP Turn 1, Global War 1939. This is a playtest dress rehearsal of the 1939 game. We're going to get into the Russia uh, Turn 1 purchase. They have 15 IPP to spend. They're spending all of it. The CCP um, gets a free infantry, so that's this uh, purple guy. This is actually a, a, an actual authentic CCP uh, sculpt from uh, HBG. It looks uh, authentic CCP uniform. So I thought I'd point that out. So Russia is getting three regular infantry and two elite guard infantry. And remember, folks, these elite guard infantry can also substitute as a paratrooper. Uh, the elite guards, I, I believe, uh, on Russian soil, attack at a three, defend at a five, and they only cost three IPP. So folks, whenever you have an opportunity um, to purchase, which you can only purchase two per turn, I advise you to do that. So I'm gonna try some different things. This is a play test with an adaptation of what Hilltop Pillbox likes to do when he plays me, because it's very effective when he's Russia. So first, the CCP, uh, there's seven battles to declare it. I think I said that. Um, so there's going to be two walk-ons. So one infantry is going to walk into Shanxi. Another infantry, it's the walk-on, is going to walk into Chahar. Now, this is, going, this is not going to negate the Mongolian rule, but however, the Russians coming in is going to do just that. So they are sending in one infantry, from Vladivostok into Manchuria, and three infantry from Amur into Manchuria, and one infantry from Amur into Northern Manchuria. Okay, so that's all the, the there's four attacks happening over here, okay? And I'm going to do this because this is what Hilltop does to me. And now they're, we're going to make an NO bonus just to make it that much more desirable. So a battle for East Poland and Baltic states and also in the most East Finnish territory, which I think is Vipuri. Or I'm going to have to move some stuff there. Vipuri. So how those attacks are going to happen is three infantry from Belarusia are going to come in. Actually, I'm going to say two. Sorry, I already messed it up. Two infantry are coming in from Belarusia, supported by the artillery. And that also going to be supported by and an artillery and a mech coming from Smolensk. So they can, they can pull, they can pull them. And also a light armor coming from Oleg Kursk. And I said this wrong in the last German video and I actually rolled it wrong, um, but I'm not gonna go back and redo it. That is a pair tactical and an armor bumps the armor up a plus one, not the actual aircraft. <laughs> I don't know why I got that wrong, but I did not bump the air, the armor up, only the aircraft last round. So it really didn't have a big effect, but, um, but it was not correct. So I'm just amending that now. So a tactical bomber paired with an armor bumps the one armor unit up plus one. So the tactical bomber coming from Moscow is gonna go one, two, three. It's gonna have two spots remaining. Okay, the, another battle is the battle for Baltic States. So two infantry from Saikov are going into Baltic States and one infantry from Prussia is going in. That attack is gonna be supported by a fighter coming from Kiev. It's gonna go one, two, three, four. So it will have one spot remaining. Now that's a little a little light, but um, we're gonna see how that goes. 
trying to be ultra aggressive as Russia. This is the most attacks I've ever done as Russia turn one. Sometimes I don't even know if I do seven attacks as Russia in a game. Well, I do, but it doesn't seem that way. So into Valpiri is one infantry coming from Leningrad, one infantry coming from Karelia, and one armor, and two fighters coming from Moscow. They are gonna go one, two, three, and have two spots remaining. They're gonna land in Leningrad. I'm not gonna bother putting the, um, the fuel gauge dice down. So there is no dice to roll over here. Um, however, I'm gonna try and do this right. Where should I do it? Let's do it right, right here. I know Hambone is so good when he does these YouTube stuff, how it just seems like everything just kind of flows nice. It's got it all mapped out first. So the battle for East Poland, we have one unsupported infantry. So he's going to be this guy. Is that two? Actually, two supported unsupported infantry, sorry. That's not correct. Sorry. One unsupported infantry. One supported infantry with an artillery. And one supported mech and an, and an artillery. So those are at three. The unsupported is at two. The armor, because it's supported by the the fighter is at a five, and the fighter is an I-16, so it actually attacks less. So folks, when you're looking at the, um, in terms of attack and defense value, you can see the I-16 attacks at a five, defends at a five, so a little bit less. We're gonna see if that math works out, and there is four units defending, so we're gonna make those the red dice. Okay, so this is a little bit of a risky battle. We are going to lose some Russians. We're going to see if we're getting out of position and it pays off. And everybody missed. <laughs> Actually, this dice, it's cocked, so we're going to roll that again. And that is a four. That's a miss. So this is, a, this is risky business here. And the defenders got a hit and the attackers got a hit. So we're going to lose one infantry from each side. We're going to press on. <laughs> of course. Well, the attackers got three hits and the defenders got two. So we are going to lose an artillery and another infantry. And that wipes out the Polish. So surviving is a mech, an artillery, and an armor, and the tactical bomber. See, the tactical bomber was actually at a seven, not at a five, because it was a tactical, not a fighter. And I'm almost tempted to reroll that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> but I'm tempted. So the next battle is three attacking at two, two defending at four, and one fighter supported at a five. And the attacker got two hits and the defender got one. So that battle um, worked out better than I anticipated. So the battle for Baltic states is now a success and now under Russian control and now the battle for Vipuri. Now, I could have sent the tactical in there because I only have, I should have, I've got this weak attack. I'm attacking four units with five units and two of them are aircraft. Oh goodness, what have I done? Anyways, um, so two attacking at two, one attacking at, and three attacking at five. Those are the, the aircraft and the two armor. And defending is four, four at four. 
This might totally go sideways. Um, so here we go. That's four units. So And the defenders got one hit and the attackers got three hits. Wow. So we lose an infantry and they lose three. They've got, I think, three infantry and an artillery on the front. So they've got their artillery left. So I just wanted to kill them all in one surviving unit because whatever I survive it, uh, for the Russians is going to probably die next turn. So that is a very good result for the Russians considering... It was a weak attack and they got their final hit. So the Russians only lose one. In, I've done this attack with all five aircraft and done worse for the Russians. So I'm calling that a overwhelming success. Now this is what Gargantua does. He seems to just go in with these odds all the time that don't seem like they're in his favor. And somehow, yeah, he, he wipes me clean every time. <laughs> so that's what happens folks I didn't go into that battle with confidence and uh, and usually sometimes the dice can maybe sense that and they're not on your side but I was yeah so these two fighters are gonna land in Leningrad the tank is there this fighter is gonna land in Leningrad. It's got two spots remaining. The tactical bomber went one, two, three. Can go two more. So we can go one, two in Leningrad. One fighter that came from Kiev, one, two, three, four, has to land in Saikov. The artillery and mech are gonna drive from Moscow two spaces to Leningrad, just in case the, the Germans wanna do some kind of amphibious attack. Now, the Russians could have attacked this Finnish destroyer here. I guess, I guess they could have attacked that transport there, and they should have. Um, because the, but the, the Finnish fighter could have scrambled, because that's an air base. I forgot. And that's what happened, folks. I'm just gonna say, hey, I forgot to attack that lone transport sitting there, that German transport by itself. And at the time when I put it there, I thought, oh, it, the Russians can attack it and they can. So um, that was a missed opportunity, a mistake going both ways. The Russians didn't attack it and they should have, and the Germans never should have put it there in the first place. So, but these things happen. You find this game is, uh, you know, <laughs> well, lots of these games are, or lots of mistakes happen, and sometimes that is the difference between winning or losing. So, um, we're going to do some non coms So, one infantry from Kiev is going to go into western Ukraine. One infantry from eastern Ukraine is going to go into western Ukraine. The artillery and two guys are going to back up into, I'm going to make this smaller, into Kursk. The 6th Infantry in Moscow are going to come forward into Kursk. The Infantry and Artillery are going to go one space into Kharkov. The AAA is going to move one forward. The AAA in Karelia is going to go into Leningrad. The Navy is going to stay there. I don't want the Germans to take it out. Some more non-coms here. The two infantry in Saka are gonna come up to Amur. Three, and um, I'm also here um, taking a bit of a risk. So three infantry are gonna get on the train and they are going to drive to Amur. I'm just gonna chip that there. Should I drive? You know, you know what? I'm going to drive two light armor there as well. So they're going to go one, two. 
drive part way there anyways. So two armor, everything and, and one infantry here is gonna get on the uh, air transport and it's gonna fly one, two, three, four, five, six into Leningrad. Actually, it can only go five, so it's gotta go to Karelia, sorry. The air transports, their movement is five and that's not coming from an air base. So that is going to Karelia. And here are the three T-34s are gonna drive two spaces to southern, I can't even say that. And the artillery, are gonna move the three artillery, four infantry, and the AAA are gonna go into Kazakh. And I guess that's, that's southern Kazakh, even though it's western Kazakh, but it's, on the map it says southern, so. So that is the Russian non-coms, uh, placement of units, the, actually forgot to do non-coms for the, so all these guys are gonna come forward. With the artillery and we are placing the new infantry and the newly captured, oh sorry, and Yunnan. So Russia, those are the um, CCP roundels even though that money's gonna to go to Russia. That's a roundel there, that's a roundel there. Now there is a factory, as we talked about, over in Karelia, and that's going to produce the two elite guards and three other infantry. So now there is four infantry, six infantry in Karelia total. So now we've got a counterattack, which folks, Like in any variant of a global war game, it's always good to have a counterattack because you know the Germans are gonna have a counterattack. So you wanna play a little ping pong and weather those units down as much as you can. So now the fun part of the Russian turn, which is rolling for the economy. It's gonna move this out of the way a little bit. So how this works, folks, Two D12s. Whatever I roll is what Russia is going to collect the next turn. So that is a not a very good roll. Average would be 12. They rolled an 8. So they will collect 8 plus um, all of the money from the territories that they. So Poland is 2. Baltic States is 2. Valpuri is 1. So that's 4. And that's worth, Manchuria is worth one. So another four, so eight plus eight. Even though they, to get to 48, only this eight counts. The other, the other eight from the liberated territories that are non-Russian territories does not count. So thankfully, and this is why Kurt attacks these territories. And actually we're saying a plus five for Poland and Baltic states. So we're gonna say 21. That's actually a lot better for the Russians. So that makes a big difference because we lost, let's just do the math here, folks. So there was four units there in Poland that would have been defending against the Germans and another two there. And we lost three units of our own. So that's a total of seven units. So that's 21 in IPCs. And, and so, yeah. So is it a payoff? If it goes two or three rounds, it's probably gonna be a wash. And that is the um, idea. Make it a wash so it's worth it. In some cases, some cases not. So Russia will have 21 IPP going into round two. Um, and sometimes folks um, in these games and Hilltop Pillbox and Sired, um, I give them credit because when they are playing, they often try new strategies. Sometimes you don't know if they're going left, sometimes if you don't know if they're going right. And they seem to come up with these creative things and they're very good at reading and reacting. And something Kurt likes to do is say this territory here, Novosibirsk, he wants to keep me guessing. I'm committed now. These guys are going this way, these guys are gone. So he would, he would probably keep some of the stuff there for one more turn. That way, what are, you know, it keeps you guessing. Are you going to go left or are you going to go right? So folks, 
whenever you're doing a solo play test game or any sort of solo game or just a fun game with your friends, do not be afraid to try new things, new strategies, new ideas. And, uh, and maybe you're gonna learn something new and maybe that is either that's a good idea, a bad idea, or maybe you're gonna learn how to defend against it or adapt it, um, but not all of it. So thanks for watching folks. Uh, stay tuned for the British, French, Dutch, Canadian, Anzac, Far East Command, Commonwealth, Southern Australia turn coming up next.